So we're on to section five, and the second topic that we're going to discuss today is sleep. We know there is a link between pain and sleep because if you're in pain during the daytime, you're more likely to sleep poorly, and if you sleep poorly tonight, you're more likely to be in pain the following day. Now we know that not all sleep is the same. We start awake and then we fall into different stages of sleep and we just number them so we know which one's which. Stage one is the lightest uh, form of sleep, whereas stage four is the deepest form of sleep and it's the most important. It's where we rest and recuperate. It's where we heal, it's where children grow and we need as much stage four as possible. Once we've had our stage four sleep, we come back out through stages three and two, and then we go back into stage one, which is the lightest sleep. It's also known as REM sleep, just like the band. REM is rapid eye movement, and it's where we dream. So if you wake up and you can remember a dream, chances are you are in the lightest form of sleep. We then go back through another sleep cycle. Each cycle takes us between an hour and a half and two hours, and we go through several cycles a night. We may well have been in bed and we may well have slept for a couple of hours, but if we've had broken sleep because we've woken up due to pain, to go to the toilet, it might be because you hear a noise, you might not have had much of this stage four good quality sleep. And all the advice that we give regarding sleep is to try and get as much of the good quality as possible. We call the sleep advice sleep hygiene. Nothing to do with cleanliness, it's just what we call sleep advice. Now the first thing we look at is what we do during the daytime and a good example would be stimulants that we might have such as caffeine. Now we know that, that caffeine will keep us awake so if we're drinking lots of tea, coffee, energy drinks. It might be that that's what's preventing us from having good sleep. We know that other people will use other things to help with sleep like alcohol and we know that that detracts from how much good quality sleep we have. So if we're thinking about caffeine in particular, we want to reduce the amount that we're having during the day. It might be that you go for decaffeinated drinks. And certainly you don't want to be having any caffeine after about six o'clock in the evening. We know that to get good sleep, we want to have a routine. And that routine needs to involve some form of relaxation. Now this is where we all differ, because what helps one person relax doesn't work for somebody else. People tell us that they will read a book, it might be that they will watch some television of an evening, have a bath, listen to music. It's a case of finding out what works for you and what helps you to relax. One thing that people often try, which might be helpful, is to use some form of, of mindfulness. You can get apps on your phone which can be very effective, just to help you switch off in the evening and get you ready for sleeping. Now we know this might sound very obvious, but going to bed when tired is really important. Because if you go to bed too early, you'll lie in bed awake. And if you go to bed too late, you might have already missed out on some good quality sleep. So make sure that you're listening to your body. You want to be yawning, feeling you get heavy eyes, and heading to bed at that point. We know having a good bedroom environment is equally as important. Now, your brain wants to link your bed to sleep. So if in the bedroom you're watching TV or you're playing on your mobile phone, going on the tablet, that can have a negative impact on sleep. So you want to make sure that your bedroom is quiet and dark, not too hot, not too cold. Now you should be able to fall asleep within half an hour. And if you can't, one of the things that we know that happens is lots of thoughts will be running through your head. And these thoughts aren't always helpful, they may actually keep you awake. So having a pad next to the bed to write down those thoughts could be really handy. And then it's actually worth getting up out of bed and going and doing something that helps make you tired. And this varies from person to person again. I've heard of people going and doing some ironing, watching some late night TV that might not be the most stimulating. Anything that helps switch you off calm you down, relax you, so that when you do get back into bed, when you're starting to yawn and get those heavy eyes again, you should be able to fall asleep within half an hour. And you might need to do this several times a night, you might need to do this for quite a few weeks before it starts to actually help. One of the most important things they've found with sleep is having a regular alarm time. People who struggle to sleep often get up at different times, but if you can set an alarm every morning, get up at the same time, Roughly speaking, you'll get tired at the same time every evening, and that helps with that routine. 
Other things we know that are good for sleep is exercising during the day. We know that you've got our circuit exercises, but you might have other activity that you want to do. Going for a bike ride or a walk. Just make sure it's not right before you go to bed. Otherwise, all those endorphins that help to block pain signals, they're also feel-good chemicals and stimulants, so they might keep you awake. So if you are exercising, a good couple of hours before you go to, to bed and to sleep. The last thing that we'll mention is that daytime sleep steals from nighttime sleep. Lots of people catnap, especially if you've had a bad night's sleep the night before, because you're tired. If you do find yourself sleeping in the daytime, try and limit it to a maximum of 20 minutes. So set an alarm if you're on the sofa and you're drifting off. Avoiding it is ideal, but limiting it to 20 minutes is the next best. And then hopefully, if you put in all these things in place, and small changes can make a big difference, it might take a couple of months, but hopefully you'll regain the sleep that you're missing out on.